Today I'm going to do a quick review of power and then uh, a simple example. So recall power is essentially a rate of change in energy. In other words, it's how quickly something can um, change energy, how quickly it can um, go from one type of energy to another. So we'll often write this as work over time, but generically speaking, it is a change of energy. Um, and remember work is force parallel to distance. Could also write it in this form. And if we group the distance over time, we could also write this as force parallel to velocity. So when you do these, you just wanna make sure, just like when we did work, that we use the component of force parallel to distance or the component of force parallel to the velocity. The units that we use, the standard units, you can see energy would be joule per second. This gets renamed as a watt. Another unit you'll often see is a horsepower. A horsepower would be, well, the power of one horse. And that turns out to be 746 watts. So let's go ahead and try an example here. And as usual, I would encourage you to do this first on your own, push pause, see if you can solve it by yourself, and then um, I'll go ahead and do it. So we have this car going up this inclined plane, 20 degrees, and essentially the car can max out at 200 horsepower. Um, and then we want to see, well, how, um, what's the maximum speed? So if you have that car floored, how fast can it go up this ramp? All right, and we're just going to ignore things like gearing and so forth and just kind of, you know, keep it simple. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and convert our horsepower. So one horsepower, if you recall, is 746 watts. So if we have 200 horsepower, um, well, that's going to be times 746 watts per horsepower. And that's going to give us 149,200 watts. So we're going to use that as our starting point. Now let's take a look at this picture. We're going to go ahead and do a real quick free body here. Remember, our velocity is going up the ramp. So there must be some thrust force from this car also pushing it up the ramp. Now there's a couple opposing forces. We have air resistance here, 2,000 newtons of air resistance. So it's going to go in the opposite direction, 2,000 newtons. And then we have, well, we have our inclines. We have gravity, the component of gravity pulling downwards, right? How much gravity is pulling down? And hopefully at this point, you can do that quickly. That's going to be mg sine of theta, all right? So we're going to be moving um, up this hill and we're reaching, reaching our top speed. So that means it's going to now be moving at a constant velocity at that point. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. So we know that our thrust force has to be perfectly balanced with the air resistance, force of air, and the force of gravity in the x direction. Our force of air resistance was 2000 newtons. This would be, again, mg sine of theta. Uh, our m was 1200 times 9.8, and the angle is 20 degrees. So that means, let's see, let's do this real quick. This is going to be 40.22 newtons. So notice that our thrust, once we've reached that top speed, our thrust needs to now be 6,000 and 22 newtons. All right, so that's going to be our thrust going up. And at this point, we're just going to finish this up and go ahead and calculate, calculate that velocity. So recall that power is equal to, well, we have work over time or force parallel velocity. Uh, hopefully in this case, since we have the power and we have the force, we're looking for the velocity here. So our power again was up here, 149,200 watts. 
that's going to equal our force, which is 6022, and we'll multiply that by our velocity. Okay, let's go ahead and do that out, and we get a velocity of 24.8. So let's just talk a little bit about some of the concepts of the problem. Notice this number here, 24.8, which is roughly 50 miles an hour. This would be the maximum velocity we can reach uh, under these conditions. So to even get up to that velocity, if you look back here, we'd need to have a force greater than this 60.22 that we have here. But notice if our velocity was less, if we had a lower velocity uh, with the same amount of power, then we can get that force greater than that 60-22, and that would accelerate us up to that peak. Notice also, if we weren't on this incline, if we were just on a straight road, for example, then you wouldn't even, um, the resistance force wouldn't be the 60-22, it would only be 2,000. And in that case, we could even get um, since we'd only need to produce 2,000 newtons to get us to a constant speed, we can get that velocity up much, much, much higher. Now there's a subtle thing that um, we're not going to talk too much about, but air resistance itself is actually dependent on speed. And that means that the faster you go, the more air resistance there's going to be. So it's not a static number such as this 2,000. So anyway, that's it for this problem. Let me know if you have any questions.